All right, so other than 2020, I think Charles River has been a pretty good stock over the years. This is going way back. Was this the IPO, 20, 2001? That sounds about right. Yeah, Huma, still a short. Markets open. Yeah, TM, they, they, it's adjusted for dividends. We should probably put the dividends on the, uh, with like a little D when they paid a dividend. I think that'd be cool. N for news headlines that works. Yeah, All you, that's exactly what you have to do. Just type in N. And this is the tape. I would just short common stock. No need for puts or anything. All right, so we'll look at Charles River. Been a steady, steady winner since their IPO 20 years ago. Pretty well run company, I think. Leader in lab animals. Maybe they've diversified a little bit from lab animal models. Crispy cream donuts. Sweet. My favorite. Shares outstanding, 10 billion cap. Uh, yeah, that's me, Dusty. Okay, billion dollars of revenue a quarter, not growing. Not growing, pretty ugly. Grow or die. And you look like you're dying. I've been playing poker with this guy, Bobby Bags. They call him Bobby Baguette. They call him Big Bobby. He sits down at the table. I said, Hey, Bobby Bags, what's going on?
I don't know. I'm not trying to monetize myself. So relatively low margin. Gross margin, at least, is relatively low. Decent operating margins. It's funny they don't break out R&D, but I mean, they certainly have to do some kind of product development. Thanks, Chase. Yeah, I want to do another interview with Vlad. He wants to have me on again. I just don't like to talk about criminal stuff, just because like I feel like I'm sometimes typecast, and I have a lot more to offer than like jail gossip. Yeah, I don't want to be a fund manager. I am happy managing my own funds. Otherwise, I'd, I'd start an offshore fund. I'm sure I could raise a, a decent fund. Yeah, you can buy a stock even if the CEO sells its shares. CEOs sometimes have a uh, financial commitments and things that they need to do. It doesn't mean that they're not working hard at running the company. Uh, 10x leverage is a lot. You know, a 10x drawdown would wipe you out. So. 10% drawdown is all it takes for you to lose everything. So that's, I don't know if that's a good idea. Even a one and a half times leverage, which is very low leverage, is, is risky. Yeah, let Jensen sell. Now, offshore is typically where most, I mean, one, yes, there's no SEC, which would be a, a requirement for me. But the nice thing about offshore is that's where most hedge fund money is anyway. So all these funds that you hear about, like Citadel, whatever, all their investors are offshore. And they're either offshore or they're tax exempt and they can invest in the offshore vehicle, which is tax free. If they invest domestically, you have capital gains tax, which is really messy. Nobody wants to pay that pesky capital gains. Only us plebs have to pay path capital gains. Yeah, so Charles River has a lot of facilities, 1.6 billion in PPE. I've paid a lot of cap gains in my life, yeah. I'm not a walking hedge fund, so yes. The only hedge fund that really paid a ton of capital gains is Renaissance. Kramer's fund also had very little um, offshore investors. Kramer never really wanted to build a big fund. He was like very old school. But almost all the hedge funds moved to the over offshore stuff. That's where all the investors are. Big endowments, pension plans, foreign investors, the Swiss love hedge funds. I don't, I don't know any short funds.
All right, so around two billion in debt, so not too leveraged up. A little bit, nothing too crazy. Kathy Woods, she didn't actually say that, did she? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a little leveraged, it's a little leveraged. It's nothing too crazy though. It's at the limit, I would say, of where I consider it super leveraged. I think that was probably a joke. Yeah, that is how it goes, TM. Yeah, that is how it goes. Cap gains on the Puerto Rico thing is a little... I know there are people that do it. It's just not for me. You got to live there six months of the year. I, I wouldn't mind if I had a huge cap gains tax. I wouldn't mind moving there, selling... I don't know if it works that way though. If I have like a $50 million cap gains liability, I move to Puerto Rico and I sell while I live there. I'll live there for a year, I don't, I don't give a fuck. 50 mil. It's this new, it's this deal, it's a six month thing where you have to live there for six months. It's not that new, it's about 10 years. No, I don't think I mentioned that, but I know that that happens, you have to pay your import tax. <laughs> you don't need to give up citizenship, nope. You're a dual citizen or whatever. It's some other kind of status. So yeah, I don't know exactly what they call it, Susan, but something or other. Never appealed to me, really. I did think about moving to Switzerland permanently, but... Oh, wow, they really... Something up with this. Something up with this. No. Okay, I'm just looking at the wrong thing. False alarm. Yeah, I like Zurich. Zurich. As us Americans say, Zurich. Zurich. Yeah, I don't want to move to Europe, though. Europe sucks. Connecticut's okay. Connecticut's as lame as Switzerland. <laughs> you can come to New York. It's at least an hour from New York. That's a good thing.
for six months, they made 323 cash flow from operations. Let's see, they had a bunch of capex, I would imagine. Yeah. Ton of capex. They really are a brick and mortar business. So only 200 million cash flow for the first half of the year, free cash flow. I'm not a skier or a mountain guy. I don't like the cold. Maybe Miami it just seems so unserious, Miami, you know? Hang out with the Founders Fund guys every day. Yeah, you can check out my GitHub, github.com forward slash Martin Scully. I try to analyze at least a couple companies a day. I don't have a amount that I need to do or anything, but it's, it's good to try. Six models a day for six summers. What's NWC? Yeah, I like Palmer a lot. Yeah, working capital is uh, just WC, WC to me. But no, we, we do point it out. It's just that in, in we had, I had a whole discussion about this, what they call Buffett return, um, which is his definitions of working capital. Uh, a lot of these com for a lot of these companies it doesn't matter, but occasionally it comes up. But for software and biopharma, there's no real relevance. They don't hold inventory. They don't have huge working capital changes. They they sometimes have huge working capital changes actually, but you know it's not uh, something that really is predictable or has any real rhyme or reason. If uh, accounts receivable start ballooning on a company, obviously it's something we try to pay attention to with day sales outstanding or whatever. But Yeah, for most software companies, it's salary, yeah. Sales and marketing, general administrative, programmers. Yeah, see, uh, see your house says literal animals. That's right. I hope there's no war in the Middle East, man. That's the thing's starting to get a little, a little spicy out there. Leading supplier of non-human primates located in Mauritius. You guys know where that is? Mauritius is to the east of Madagascar? Damn.
Well, that's cool that they bought a company out there. Ninety million bucks. I mean, that's awesome. Looks like the total amount was three, four hundred million. Nova Prim Group. I guess if you're in Africa, why not <laughs> sell some chimps? <laughs> that's where they live. <laughs> Go where they are. <laughs> Go to the jungle. Get some chimps. Hey guys. We got some drug companies that want to Mauritius. Yeah, you can imagine. I wasn't saying it right. We got some. We got some pharma companies that want to chill with you. Tim is looking at you like. <laughs> but if you had the, uh, if you got that grape drink, the lab animal grape drink, or fruit drink, they love that. We do non-human primate grape drink. They're like, mmm. Yeah, it's the purple stuff, basically. They love it. You gotta see these lamb animals are adorable. We're looking at a stock called Charles River Labs right now. Try to pay attention, lock in, focus a little bit. It's not hard. Charles River Laboratories, 10 billion market cap. Revenue is not growing. That is a problem. That's a motherfucking problem. I don't care if you have ADHD. Okay, what's RMS? This is their business line. RMS and then DSA. RS, RMS is research models and services. So here they sell research models. And DSA is discovery services and safety assessment. So I guess the um, This guy goes, what happened to Atelier? What do you mean, what happened to Atelier? What are you talking about? Is it down 50%? Is it up 50%? What are you asking me? I hate stupid people, bro. I have no patience for that shit. Some of you guys are going to trigger me and get me mad, and I'm going to start yelling. Like, like... I'm your boss. I'm going to start yelling at you like, I'm your boss. Oh, what's up, kitty? You sneeze too? My cat sneezed too. Oh, no. We got cold, kitty. We got a cold. Oh, we got a cold, kitty. this munchkin oh, who wants to piss me off man turn me back to old me I'm a real mean dude you if you if you try to get under my skin you're fucking mean man guess what not every stock I pick is going to work out. Guess what? Okay? 
I'm the problem. It's me. I'm going to be throwing the keyboard next. Problem, it's me. Of course, I look at United Therapeutics. Are you crazy? It's one of my core stocks. Let's not try to focus on today or tomorrow stock prices. We can't control that, right? What we can control is finding, doing deep research on lots of stocks, and maybe one or two will come to the surface that we can buy or short. But if we focus too much on well, what's happening today, or what was something like that, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, it's not gonna do us well. I haven't looked into the text ex exchange too well. If you're trading options, you might as well forget, yeah, you might as well forget what I do. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> trading options or day trading, just go somewhere else. I can't help you. My software might be able to help you, but you know, maybe I'll start trading a little more actively, but I'm, I'm a long-term investor. That's what I'm good at. If I start trading left and right, you know, you're just going to see me lose money, which I don't mind. It could be entertaining, but if you think you could outtrade the quants, God bless you, try it. Some people can. It's difficult. Maybe I can help you lose less money or make a little bit more. But uh, day trading's hard. I prefer to do some heavy duty research, control my own destiny. I don't really need to do options. I'm happy to do equity. I've been following Uther for 20 years. <laughs> you know, the Remodulin saga for me was always interesting because I always thought this was an old drug. It should go generic at some point. And, you know, uh, Martine has fought tooth and nail to stop generics, but, uh, you know, I'm the one who got banned from pharma, but <laughs> not that I care, but. Uh, she did a tremendous job of stopping generics from entering on all her products. And I think as a capitalist, she's, she's allowed to do that. Um, I would expect that as a stockholder. I would expect that as a business person. I think it's good for society when capitalists are vigorous agents for their shareholders. Yeah, same SEC laws would apply. Yeah, they're, they're handling lo the liquidity uh, situation just fine. I don't think liquidity is going to torpedo them, but I told uh, I told them to merge with Biomarin years ago because eventually you focus all your the whole company on one molecule, one old molecule. The hell, how is that going to work? That's never worked in the history of drug companies. Eventually, all your products go generic. What the hell? You make a drug device combo. Okay, that's innovative. That's neat. But what else? What's next? You know, the main avenue of success in pharma is diversification and, and growing internationally and stuff like that. And they've just kind of just been a very odd company. Yeah, well, you know, the organ stuff is, is very, I'm very dubious, you know, it's kind of a, it's a lark. That's not even biopharma, right? And people look at that, I mean, it's biopharma, but people look at that and say, are you trying to be a drug company? Are you trying to be a science project? Or what are you trying to do? Cat's right to my left. She sits there when she 
sits there chilling. Oh, no. There we go. We chilling right there. Right next to Dad. do real estate. I don't know, the war trade probably doesn't make sense. War's never been that bad for the market, and we're not in this war, so... So Charles Rivers, no growth. That's two quarters in a row. Yeah, I guess the chair's kind of low, but I'm also slouching like a bum. Let's look at a 10K for Charles River. Circuit breaker. Down one percent. Relax. Man said circuit breaker. <clears throat> yeah, earnings have been great. Let them go to war. Whole world's at war. Uh-oh, Tim's bearish. That's how used to gains we are. 1%. It's a crash. It's over, boys. Pack it up. 
Hedge fund blew up on the 1% drawdown. Yeah, strike might be over. That's the other big bearish thing is this pork strike. Charles River, they pay interest on their, on their uh, debt. So Charles River is founded in 1947. Charles River is in what, uh, mass, right? IPO 2000, which we discussed earlier. New York Stock Exchange. Headquarters, Wilmington, Wilmington, Mass. Phone number, leading non-clinical global drug development partner. Legacy competency, core competency on lab animals. In vivo biology is our core competency. Client base is major pharma, biotech, ag, CROs, hospitals.
Okay, RMS. Hundred and forty different rodents. Oh, he's the CEO. He was the GC. Now he's been the CEO forever. He's been the CEO since 92. Damn, time to retire, dogs. Yeah, we looked at gene therapies and CRISPR all day yesterday. curing type 1 diabetes. America started that a long time ago. A company called Vertex Pharmaceuticals. Pride of Boston. China's just copying us. Probably some spies or something. Yes, last year revenue grew 4% over 2022. This year it looks like revenues might decline a little bit. Pretty ugly. Somewhat low margin, somewhat capital intensive. It's not a horrible business. Just a little a little dry, a little dull. The revenue grew the year before, though, decently. Twelve percent, pretty solid. Guitar someday. Okay, so operating. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Got this all messed up. Operating income. Get the valuation. Yeah, 
All right, so 12.3 billion enterprise value, 700 operating income. So we're talking about 18 times operating income for a no grower. Man, oh fuck out my face. Just a good maybe core short just to. Just you need some beta. This thing ain't gonna hurt you. Short exposure. But you'd also need to pair it with a low beta long. You can't hedge with low beta unless you got low beta on the other side. So you got a low beta long, I don't know, like, uh, what's a low beta long? Any drug company, this would be a good, that you believe in, this would be a good short against that drug company. Net income, pretty low, half a billion. So like 600 mil. This shit is weak, all right? This shit is just weak. What's there to innovate, you know? Get some AI animals or something. Put some, put some AI in those lab animals. Infuse it with AI. I think you should consider your portfolio. Well, the gross margins, nevertheless, are, are decent. For what they do, they're decent gross margins. Like, I have to admit that. But valuation just isn't isn't great. Let's look at the cash flow characteristics real quick. Cash flow operations are very similar to operating income. Cash flow from operations in the six to seven hundred range for the last few years. Uh, CapEx in the two to three hundred million range. So you have a free cash flow, very low. Hold on, what am I doing here? Six, eight, three, yeah, okay, good. Yeah, I don't know why anybody would pay 20 times for no growth. Miss me with that. Okay, let's look at clear side because everyone wants to look at that 